police are currently investigating who wrote a message in chalk that read white power in front of the home of coach Lewis Orr and his family. This is not just uh, a place where I coach, this is home. And I see this uh, white power, so it just shot me. And uh, I was hurt. This part of the driveway, I saw the writing, I saw a SWAT sticker. It was four high school kids. I wanted to talk to these young guys. But I wanted them to understand words have power. Racially charged tweets geared towards minorities at BGSU caused turmoil among the community. One of the organizations on campus was having a social event at one of the local bars in Bowling Green. There were lots of tweets that were going out about how you know African-American people weren't typically at this bar and just really, really racist things. If nothing else, it just opened our eyes. In many ways, the racist tweet incident was for many students the last straw. People would retweet it and agree and respond. Just that whole thing, I feel like it really hit, like this is really a problem that we need to address. I am a person of color and that is uh, core to who I am as a person. I think just a lack of education in general is what's most harmful. And the more that we ignore racism, um, overt or covert, the more harmful the internalization of um, that pain and that racism is going to be. What's inspired me to take a stand is all of those people that have come before me. People were fighting a really, really long time for me to be here. And as it makes me really emotional, I have a responsibility and a human responsibility to other people. Like I thought about us all being in college, like and coming here, that we kind of had the same mindset of like being diverse and being open-minded, mm -hmm. getting to know new people and new things. So when that stuff was happening, I was like, oh. Something needs to happen, yeah. yeah. The Black Student Union President Tiffany Smith says that her goal is to turn this hurtful experience for BSU into something helpful for everyone. You can't really turn the tweets into positive things because they were negative. But the thing we're going to use instead of being using our passion to be mad or angry or upset, we're going to use our passion to better our community. We started looking at how do we respond and we just started throwing around you know what have other communities done and, and what have other institutions have done. I actually had been involved with the Not In Our Town campaign in Bloomington, Illinois and it was really good because it gave language around things that sometimes are hard to talk about. Only two-thirds of people who experienced racial discrimination were willing to talk about it with a family member, with a friend, with anyone. Uh, the other third remained silent. So sometimes it's about the community coming together and offering support. It was decided um, that we were going to roll out a pledge and we were going to do the launching of Not In Our Town. We pledged to uphold a common set of core values. This is who we are, and this is what we stand for. If one person is unsafe for any reason, um, that is not an isolated incident. There is something much bigger that is happening that makes that person unsafe. Not in Our Town was a, a really good way for me to get involved in something that was bigger than myself. It allowed me to reach people who were struggling with racism, with sexism. Everything that you could come up with and kind of stand in solidarity with them, talk it through, um, kind of humanize ourselves to each other and become a much bigger community.
Bowling Green State University Police Department is actually partnering with the city police. We're showing up at all the community events and just making sure that we're not uh, only getting involved when it's a crime. Letting the community know that uh, we don't, we also do not support acts of intolerance and that we're there to assist and, and help. I think that as we move forward, we're going to have to work on how we can really strengthen, and not just the, the, the sense of comfort, but the comfort of students of color with the, um, uh, the, the police departments, both in the Bowling Green community and here uh, on the campus police, as well as um, strengthening the administrative uh, initiatives that have begun. There have been uh, different misunderstandings between students of color and the local police. That just led to a general tone of what's really happening here and are we as students of color really welcomed in the city of Bowling Green as well as on this campus. You know, when I first came to Bowling Green, I probably was pulled over like four times by different authorities, city police, sheriff, the highway patrol, but I never got ticketed. I talked to a couple of players where they got stopped with the chief of police, and we had a, a sit down face to face, and I told him my feelings, and, and I appreciated him listening to me. As a community policing organization, as an organization who wants to make this a better community, I think the best thing we can do is engage our community, sit down, have a conversation with folks, and say, you know, how can we make Bowling Green better? As we face issues on campus and off campus, students often feel like, where can they turn if they feel like the police department's not on their side? So automatically, when you see a magnet that has now been put on the police department's cars, you know that the police there are going to support um, and going to do what they can to make sure that there's no hatred, there's no discrimination. So that just right there is a step in the right direction. We're trying to raise the awareness to, to the people in this community that yes, that we need to come together to try to, to, to send a message that's not going to be acceptable. A lot of times we don't think of that, but we go, oh, well, you know, I, just, I was just making a joke. How many... Collaboration with the city has been a very integral piece. We are very, very fortunate that we have such a, a wonderful mayor and a president who um, were from the very beginning on board with Not In Our Town. People have been talking together, working together, uh, thinking out things uh, together, uh, working with the university. Uh, yes, we encountered some resistance, but the fabric of our community is to work together. It's a constant reaching out, trying to talk things out, and uh, the, we keep the lines open, and the president of the university knows that she can get a hold of me or get a hold of Mr. Fawcett or the chief. And so I, I, I like to think that Not In Our Town has been a, a kind of a, a, a good fit, a, a natural evolvement from our history with human relations within the city of Bowling Green. The thing that I, I think makes it successful is the level of awareness that we're raising. We're talking about continuing to build more university community partnerships, um, about establishing um, sort of protocols for how we want to respond um, when something does happen in the community. Get the word out that this is the kind of place that we want Bowling Green to be. It's a place where racism and intolerance and other forms of um, oppression don't happen in our town. It's not in our town. There's going to be a lot of different events yeah. um, that Not In Our Town put, is putting on tomorrow. So have you bought the t-shirt yet no, from the bookstore? <laughs> the Campus Climate Now is very bold and really confident in who we are as a community and what we value as a community. Don't be a silent witness, so don't allow discrimination to happen in front of you. What other goals do we have? 
I mean, just to get involved in general. Even if you don't witness something happen, there are ways to get involved so you learn what to do if it does happen. We know that it can be tough when you transition from being on a college campus to being back home, specifically when you're an LGBT student, right? Well, this campaign actually allows us to talk about the various complexities that we sometimes don't get to talk about. Not just race or not just ethnicity, but also about gender and sexuality and ageism. Not In Our Town really brings people together. Usually those people are people that you would never expect to see interacting, so it really gives people the opportunity to engage in dialogue with each other. I got to put like a, an offensive term on the brick and basically we're gonna be breaking down the wall. There's a lot of work to be done, but I really feel proud that we had partnerships between students and the community that were, were doing outreach. One huge aspect of safety is getting the community to feel comfortable approaching police. And this has been an opportunity for us to get out in the community. Many times people don't always report things that have occurred to them to the police, even when they are crimes. Uh, they don't think that we're going to take it seriously or they don't think it's important enough uh, to talk to a police officer about. And so many times I'm, I'm hearing about things that haven't been reported and then we can reach out and follow up with people and see if there's anything there that we can help them with. I just want to thank each and every one of you for what you've done individually and what you've done collectively to make change happen. But we all know the reward for good work is more work. <laughs> it seems like everyone's embraced it, and I think it's an opportunity for students to talk about the racism, bigotry, uh, any kind of injustices, and be a, a voice of change, of reconciliation, uh, of growth. You can really change the culture. And it may take a while, it probably will take a while, but it can happen. And I think leaving a place better than you arrived to it is really your greatest legacy as a student and as a community member.